Hello friends, it's Simone. I don't want to make the same mistake as last year where I kept all of my samples that I received from friends forever until I swatched them. So today I want to swatch the nine samples that Pamela, who is at old lady with camera on Instagram, brought me to the San Francisco pen show. I have these here in my beautiful pen holder, pen and ink vial holder from Fountain Pendulum. And the cool thing about this is that you can take them apart. I actually am going to do that right now because I already splattered some ink on here. Not when I was swatching, but when I was trying to remove a converter out of a fountain pen. So no. Do not want to do this. I'm swatching on original 52 GSM Tomoe River paper in my ink swatch book. I'm at the middle right now, so these are all the swatches that I have basically chronologically swatched in here for no other reason but to have a documentation of the inks that come in and out and then I'm swatching them on these cards that I make myself out of mixed media paper from Kansan <clears throat> and I cut them and punch them. I'm using my brass Kakimori dip nib on a Tachi Kava nib holder and you should not leave this in your water for too long because then it's going to um, wreck the wood which is not the greatest maybe i need to go and look at the resin holders that some of the pen makers make i at the san francisco pen show i saw them offered from river city penco which is the first that i heard of and then i also saw them at sean newton's table and that's something that i'm i wanted to support him <clears throat> with something because I just liked him so much but I didn't know what to get um, but I, I think I saw it on a video from somebody who shared his table that he had nip holders and so that's something that I want to keep in mind to maybe get a resin that I like with one of those from a maker that I like. So I have nine samples here. Oh, and I'm also using cotton swabs for swatching. I have nine samples here. I'm going to read them to you so you know what you're getting into. Birmingham, most of them are Birmingham Penco with one exception. So Tailings Pond, Root Cellar, Interstellar Bronze, Railroad Spike, ugh, please. Tesla Coil, Waterfront Dusk, Sailor Shikiori Kasa, Kasasagi, Streetcar, and Puce Lagoon. I am going to swatch them all, even if I have swatched them previously, because I don't trust Birmingham Penco's <laughs> consistency, and so I can actually compare. Usually I swatch these first. Tailings Pond looks like a very muddy swamp color. It's very dark. It's very wet too. That is what I have learned about Birmingham Penco. Um, that most of their inks are pretty wet. It doesn't matter what color. So with other pen maker, uh, ink makers, sometimes uh, when you get to those lighter colors, they are especially the light orange ones sometimes and the blue ones they're often quite wet ah, dry that's what i'm trying to say and uh, have flow issues but i haven't noticed that with uh, birmingham penco which i find very interesting so this goes to the side let's see that this is dry and then let's get some ink on this nib and I'm just abbreviating BPC, if I can. Tailings Pond. I like this. 
um, I like the way that it is coming off my nib. Sometimes with some of Birmingham Penco inks, I have the feeling that it almost falls off my brass nib, which is also not what I want. I want a really nice medium. I want the ink to come off nicely, but also, you know what this color reminds me of here on the Tomoya River paper? Robert Oster Melon Tea. I need a this a this yeah i never thought i would like these kinds of colors but this one is actually really nice so i want a really happy medium and i know you can't always really judge how the ink comes off the brass nib but when you do this often and you'd use the same tools all the time. I feel like I'm repeating myself um, when I say this. I have a water glass right here. I need to get it closer a little, but also not drip. Okay. Um, I feel like I repeat myself all the time in my ink swatching videos, but if this is the first one that you're watching, then maybe that's something you have never heard. Um, when you use the same tools, even if it's not the perfect, you know, I don't know how wet it, how wet it is, how well it will perform in my uh, pens. I do, I am able to judge a tiny bit um, by how the ink comes off the nib. This is a, a yellow ochre. And this is called Root Cellar, which is actually, I really like, I like, I like this color too. It looks very um, neon-y to me, like there's some undertones in here that make it super bright. Okay, and then we do this here. So it is the second Wednesday after the San Francisco Pen Show. And I feel like I'm finally settling back into my, my, my routine. Going away always makes me, makes me weird. <laughs> I, I have the hardest time settling back. But I hope that this is a good settling back in because my kids are back in school. Root cellar. Um, yeah, this, I really, ABC. I feel like this is a settling in for, for, a, for a longer while than usual. I'll move this to the side. Nah, this is not, this is not good. This is good. BPC. Okay. I do have two videos that I want to share f before I'm sharing this one. Oh my gosh, here. There's neon yellow. I feel like, I mean, I love that the colors turn like this, this neon. <sighs> okay, I, I always have something to complain about. You know that by now. But it's like, there's neon in all of the colors now. And I, it makes it less interesting. I'm also using this cool octopus that I purchased at the San Francisco Pen Show. Oh, you can even see how it glistens. I hope you can see this uh, on the on the cotton swab. I think I already had a, a sample of interstellar bronze, but I might have not used it in a pen and I might have given it away. Oh my gosh. But maybe this time around, I'm going to be brave and use them in pens. Oh, I have a question. 
I'm looking at these and they're like, these look like there is some witch's brew inside of this color. Do you only put these types of inks? I'm talking especially about the interstellar bronze. Do you make sure that you're not putting them in any valuable pens? Do you trust? I mean, why wouldn't we trust? Do you trust Birmingham Pen Co. to only use what is safe in all pens? Or do you take precautions by maybe just putting them in cheaper pens, Chinese pens? Affordable is probably the better uh, phrase so that if, if something happens to the pen, you can say, okay, let's just chuck it. It's fine. I'd love to know. Interstellar bronze. A, B, C, A, B, C. Yeah, I have one video um, there. When you see this, obviously, they should have been published. Um, I have one video where I talk about documenting inks and what makes sense and what doesn't. I thought it was going to be more of a educational video, <laughs> but actually it was just a let's talk through this for me i don't think feel i feel like that's the only kind of video that i'm good at making right now let's talk about my feelings about this and then see where we go from here i know that other people on youtube have a much better way of you know packaging their neon green packaging their videos so that they are more educational that you might possibly get more out of them not me okay have you used this in a pen how did it perform i'm curious i'm super glad so it's only september 4th right now when i'm filming this you will see this so there's two more videos which means maybe Saturday, September 15th, 14th, something, something like that. Um, and I am really, really glad that I made the executive decision. decision. I'm not saying what ink this is. I don't know. Let's check. Railroad Spike. Um, it's a blue, gray, gray, blue, dark, not gray. Um, I'm already very glad that I made the executive decision not to partake in 30 inks 30 days but do my own thing again in October because I am playing around with my new pens I'm getting to know them I'm swapping around some nibs and it is a lot of fun and I'm glad that I'm giving myself that time to do this instead of having to rush into the next project. Oh, can you see the red sheen that is coming up here? Here as well, BPC. Railroad spike. So I'm, I, I, I'm, I'm really glad I did this. It's like, I thought about this um, just last week, how I went into this year saying that I have plans, I want to do things, but the most important thing for me is to be flexible and to basically play it by ear and see how things go. And I think that is one thing that I definitely succeeded in doing this year. I was very flexible with how I did all of my projects. I stopped doing things that didn't work. Um, and so is there a through line through all of my projects? Yes, it's the 
listen to your gut. It's weird. I know that there are some people who never need any plans, who don't need to, um, you know, you don't have to have projects because everything in life is flowing nicely. That's not how life works for me. I thrive on projects when there is... I thrive, but also fail when I set myself limitations. And so um, I think at the end of last year, I was at the point where I, I figured out that in order for the limitations and the projects and the rules to work, I need to really hone in on recognizing the moment when the when the rules and the limitations don't work anymore, Tesla coil, so that I can react to that and alter the rules, break out of the rules instead of putting, trapping myself in something. This is the story of my life, basically. And I... I have talked about this, the breaking of the rules and the not trapping myself for a long time on my channel right now. And if you've been watching my videos, you know that. But I think this year was the first year where I was successful in recognizing when uh, I needed to change course slightly. Maybe that has to do with having a puppy again but I again I have never had a puppy but I was like having a tiny creature that depends on you that's what I was going to for um with the again because of my children because at the time that I had my children I did not realize that I can I, did I have rules and regulations I don't know but I felt my kids were, I was never relaxed. Maybe I'm never relaxed. Maybe I am just not a relaxed person in general. Could be too. Um, it, having small children, having kids was a stressful experience for me. Maybe I shouldn't have gotten a puppy after like trapping myself in rules again, <laughs> in rules and regulation. Because I should have learned from having kids that I'm always stressed. Hmm. This is a stream of consciousness talking, as you can clearly hear. Um, this is reminds me very much of Diamine Ruby Blues. This one reminds me very much of Ackerman. Um, gourmet pens collaboration party business in the front party in the back I need to pull the cards to show you then Tesla coil um, but maybe the reason why I was able to not hyper focus on my hobbies let's I'm gonna bring over the water every time I swirl in here nope just getting darker green. Um, maybe the reason why I was able to not hyper focus and, and notice when I was when I needed to change path is because my my attention wasn't fully eaten up by my hobbies because I well, I I had to always give a lot of attention to the puppy. So maybe that's not just a bad thing. I always complain about how, complain, moan, tell you um, how I'm really all consumed by taking care of the puppy and how it, it sometimes is really stressful and it, I, I notice that I don't get enough time for myself but also maybe 
that is a good thing because then I have to really focus on what do I want to do? What actually brings me joy? Do I want to waste time doing this waste, you know? Or is this actually bringing me joy? I, I don't know what it is, but I love all of these colors. This one is super cool and I didn't tell you, Waterfront Dusk. So maybe it actually is for the best that I only had such limited time so that I really needed to think, what is it that brings me joy? What do I want to do? Where is this going? Which, which things do I need to let go of so that I have the time to do the things that I really love? <clears throat> so in order to do that, that was good. And where did I come from so that I ended up here? Do we know that? Do you? Well, you probably know. I don't. I don't remember. I need to take off that drop here. Um, BPC waterfront. So if I had placed this order with Birmingham Pen Company, I would be really happy about all of those colors. I think the Interstellar Bronze and the Tesla Coil aren't inks that I would use on a daily basis, but all of the other ones so far, if they behave well in pens, really, I'm very attracted to all of them. Yeah, so why did I, why did I come here? to say this oh the rules the project the 31 30 inks 30 days that's how i got here bpc so i want to dusk do a another use up these samples in october month and i already pulled the inks out of my sample box, did I do everything that I wanted to do? I believe so. Let's. Um, and I wanted to do it in a kind of rainbow style. Now I'm not so sure anymore. Because, because I already pulled all of them, I won't be able to include any of these inks. I could use all of those, though, to ink up pens for November. Can you believe that November is only two months away? And because I have, so this video, Saturday, Wednesday, so this is, it's September 4th, but when I film videos and I know that I'm letting them go, that I'm releasing them at a later date, for some reason, my month flies by because I feel in that, this is the moment that I'm, is this black? Dark blue? Um... So in my mind, it's already September 15th or whatever date that might be. This is a super dark blue. Is that Payne's gray? What would you think this color is? So if you saw how the other inks went onto the paper, did you hear how this one did the wee, 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 wee? Yes, it's not a very reliable method of calling out an ink as being dry. That's definitely one of the first indicators to me, though, that if it doesn't, if it soaks into my um, cotton bud, then, and it doesn't really come off onto paper well, it might be not as flowy. So, okay, I'm telling you the plan. 31 inks, 31 days, 31 postcards. And I'm not really sure how, who I'm going to choose for the postcard. I always feel, and I think that's okay, BPC. No, that's not true. F-U-C-K, Sailor. 
Shikiori. Oh, I know why this is so wet. Kaza. Zagi. Because I did not put this on the card first. This looks like a... You know what this reminds me of? Lennon Toolbar Oyster. I have so many cards to pull and show you. Sailor. Shikiori. See when you tilt the pen further down how broader the line width is? Really? Kaza. Sagi. I like this. I like how this writing looks, actually. A, B, C. A, B, C. So now it needs to dry. I will turn off the camera. I will pull out all of the uh, comparable inks that I talked about and show them to you when I come back. All right, so Tilling's Pond is this... Oh, did I say motor oil? I think so. Shoot, I forgot to pull it out. Then we'll have to do that right now. Robert Oster. Or melon tea, maybe. Let's check melon tea and motor oil. C-H. Melon tea is very different. So you can see these two. Now I'm wondering if I need to turn on my light. Can you see better now? Melon tea, and then motor oil. Yeah, this is closer. Even though it doesn't look like it here, it's a different paper. But this is not. This one seems to be wetter and not as shady. Okay, so that one I talked about. Then root cellar. I just wanted to show you. It looks similar to Kyung Hui, but there's more orange. This one is Brandy Snap. You can see that I like these types of colors, but it's it's still different enough to warrant just putting it into a pen. It it looks more it has more green hues in the shading. Then Interstellar Bronze. I don't have a dupe for that. I feel almost that this looks very similar to um, Kiwi Inks Quetzalcoatl. I don't know if I wrote, said that wrong. Railroad Spike, Ackerman Business in the front, Party in the back. So I think the base color is more leaning towards green and this one is more leaning towards red. Would it show in the writing? I don't think so. And what else did we have? Tesla Coil. This one is the actual... Um, what are these cards called with the hole here? From the well-appointed desk coloring cards. So this might be a reason why this is more sheeny, but these are basically the same base color. Yeah, they are super close. So if you have Diamond Ruby Red... Uh, Ruby Blue, sorry... Um, from the ink vent, then you don't need Tesla coil. And then what else? Waterfront Dusk is this super dark purple with some green halo around here. I just pulled out white Writer's Blood to show how different or not different it actually is. It leans more blue for sure. Um, so you can get a good idea of this. This one is really lovely. And then lastly, here is Lennon Toolbar Oyster and Sailor Shikiori Kazazagi. I, this is, I think my, my ink bottle already darkened a little bit, so it looks closer to this. But I think this has more blue than it shows on this card. Okay, I hope... This is dry now. Let's just uh, put a paper here and then I can turn the page around and we can do the last two colors that I have prepared or that I received from Pamela. 
this is all the ink samples that I have. I don't have any that I haven't swatched yet. I'm very happy about. I think I'm at around 190. Let me check my. Ooh, something is falling in a second. I did my August um, summary. Where is it though? Here. Status update. So I have 109. I took out 11 samples when I prepared for uh, 30 inks, 30 days, because I thought I was going to do it in September that I didn't want to use. And I received two and nine during the month of August. That's 11. So I am at 109. I thought 190. It, both numbers aren't really feasible for me at the moment. But I'm slowly working towards getting less and less. Uh, I have 30, 46 ink bottles now. I got another one yesterday. So I'm at 47. I went from 34 to 47. And pens, interestingly enough, is fl not fluctuating as much at, as you think it would. Like the number of pens stays very close to between 30 and 35. So it's 31 at the beginning of August at 33 at the end of August. That's wild to me. Stuff you didn't ask for, but still was were able to get in this video. Let's continue. Birmingham Penco Streetcar. Oh, there we go. Opening up. Oh, are they talking about the San Francisco, the, um, ha, brain, brain fart. The, um, cable cars? No, this is much more, much lighter. This actually reminds me of Sailor 50 States Nevada. Didn't have to buy that expensive bottle of not much ink. Just, could have just gone with um, this one instead. Okay, what else? This. I guess I'm gonna pull out Nevada. Let's see if I can find it right now. Maybe it's even in this stack right here. Back here. Nope. Nope. This is actually more saturated, or at least while it's wet it is. Um, my nib and then let's continue working towards the end goal of swatching all of those inks BPC streetcar yes it looks like a an orange well it is an orange C A B C that here Yeah, I, first of all, I feel like this is a really lovely fall color palette, BPC. But I also think that a lot of Birmingham Penco inks are leaning fall color palette. Is there a green? I don't know. This one is, I think, one. That's it, right? Yes. <laughs> wow, look at the water. This looks lighter, ob obviously, but I feel like these are super, super similar. Let's just leave this right here. And then last one is Puce Lagoon from Birmingham Penco. I am really curious to know how okay puce 
Now, I don't really remember what pews actually means. What it is. This reminds me of Troublemaker uh, Petricor. So what I would love to know from you is, I just told you about my rules and regulations that I have for myself and how I'm learning to accept that I want them, but also that how to recognize uh, when they are not working for me anymore. Do you have this too? Is that something that is specific to me? Maybe it's BPC, BPC, Pews. Oh my gosh. P-U-C-E. Couldn't be easier. Pews. Oh. A, B, C. Is this a dry chromo shading ink? Could this be from Birmingham Penco? Wow. That's an uh, first. Oh my gosh. This is changing colors so wildly, so differently. This is um, a light gray that leans red. These ones aren't. These ones look more as if there was yellow inside too. But I... I, I think I'm going to pull out Petricor for sure and show you um, what that looks like. BPC, Puce, Lagoon. I need to stand to reach my stand goal. So, I think this is the one of the only colors that are not super speaking to me um yeah let me know in the comments down below if i'm the only person who who does that to themselves all the time um yeah if i if i would write say one win why do i not have a troublemaker tab or what why do i not here it is troublemaker Okay, let's just flip through this. Maybe there's more than one. They off. They have a lot of these muddy colors or gray, weird ones here. Kelp tea is too green. Sea glass is too green. Starry night blue. Tablea. So where is Petrichor? Petric core. What? Oh, I think it's back here somewhere. There we go. Yeah. I I think I did had a water droplet on there. Droplet on there. These ones are very similar, all of them. So we can look at those. Yeah, I would love to know how how your how you swatch your inks how you do the things and just chat in general these are two swatches of troublemaker petricor this one is a sample that i received from roxy in july 2023 and this one is a bottle that I purchased from Vanessa in January of 2024. So I guess not just uh, Birmingham Penco inks aren't consistent. I think Puce Lagoon is leaning more towards pink. This has, oh my gosh, I can't hold the cards. This has more of the, the green, blue, green, blue, gray. And this one is definitely more towards, leaning towards pink. But look at how different these colors look on um, Tomoya River paper. And now all of the yellow that I was talking about earlier has gone and has been replaced with this pinkish hue in the background. Mm -hmm. 
I like this. I don't really care for that. Interesting, interesting. Alrighty, this was it. I don't know if I made sense. Wow, look at Monteverde Chameleon. Waterfront Dusk. Hello. Very similar as well. Yeah, if the interstellar bronze sheen is very greeny, frog green to me. Um, this is a really lovely, nice color palette. Maybe I'm going to put them aside and just try to use them in November. That would be fun, even though it's only September. I could... See, here's the thing. thing. Let's do this. Let's... I'm going to make the plan to do that in November. I'm going to put them all back in here. And then when it comes closer to November, I'm going to reassess and see if that idea is still interesting to me. All right. A pen. Okay, thank you so much for watching. I hope you have a wonderful day. And if you have, can, take some time to swatch some inks and have some fun with this. See you.